Today we're going to talk about your sense of self and I'm going to be sharing a certain point of view, my perception and hopefully the perception of some of you here. And the idea behind this is to get you to view yourself in a different light. I will admit that this might end up being a somewhat obscure subject and it might only be relatable to those of you who are in the later stages of your reboot or perhaps those of you who are have overcome some other addiction. Either way, I'm going to talk about it. So as some of you may know, in recent years, I've really stepped up my meditation practice. Last year, I was doing about two hours plus a day. And now with new responsibilities, new businesses started, I've reduced it to an hour. But on my days off, I try to push for two hours. My partner, my girlfriend of 14, soon to be 15 years, does the same. And we were having a conversation about the self, the way we view the self. But I also realized that this is something that would have really helped me early on in my reboots. See, in our day-to-day -day lives, in your day-to-day -day life, you have a tendency to perceive yourself as a thing, as an object. And even the way we speak reinforces the fact that we are actually a thing. But when you really look at yourself, you realize that yourself is not a thing. It's actually doing something all the time. It's kind of like a wave. And what that means is that it's, it fluctuates. Yourself, whatever is made up of, of self-talk, of experiences, of different things, it fluctuates. Sometimes it's strong, sometimes it's weak, sometimes it spreads out like a wave, sometimes it subsides. And I'll give you an example. Let's say when you go home tonight, when you're in bed and maybe you're not asleep yet, you're just laying down, but you feel safe, you're under the covers, your sense of self becomes much smaller. So it comes down all the way to you. But let's say you walk into a party filled with strangers and you walked in late and everybody stopped to stare at you. Then your sense of self becomes huge. It becomes this massive wave, so much self-talk. Now the self-talk is not outwardly directed at these people. The self-talk is inwardly directed towards you. There are many mental images, there are sensations, there are emotional sensations that you're feeling as well. But then notice once you come in and after a while, once you get comfortable with people and start having conversations, you notice that sense of self slowly diminishes, the wave becomes smaller. And what I'm saying is that many of us are reactive to ourself. The state of ourself that often determines whether we slip or not. And as you get into the later stages of your reboot, you learn how to identify it. You're like, oh, okay, when my sense of self is this big, or this small, or whatever it may be, I am likely to slip or relapse. For some of you, when your sense of self is supposed to be small, that is circumstances like just being in bed at night, it actually isn't. When you're supposed to feel safe and you're winding down for the day, your sense of self, your identity is churning. Oftentimes it is bringing up scenarios from the future. So you live mentally in a scenario in the future that creates anxiety. Then your sense of self is suddenly agitated and then you have to medicate that agitation. Other times, once you're in a stressful situation and the wave is huge, right after that, before it even diminishes, you relapse or you slip. So we come to find out that your sense of self, it's not a thing that doesn't change. So sometimes when you're in traditional therapy, they'll refer to yourself as this thing. Like, hey, yourself is this thing that's made up of all these qualities right now. And you want to change these qualities to something else. So it says, you're an addict. Like, you should identify as an addict. Yourself is an addict. 
But in reality, you're not a thing. You're more like a flow. You're more like just a giant wave of thoughts and feelings. And it increases and it decreases. And as a result of that, yourself in any given moment is not permanent. It is ever-changing. It is constantly fluctuating. So it doesn't mean that it isn't there. It definitely exists. It's just that it is not a thing. It is impermanent. It is a process. I'll say it again. Yourself is a process. It is not a particle. And it is a verb. It is not a noun. So now a verb is an action word. It describes action. Nouns are people, places, and things. So when we say like a noun is a person, like that person is a noun, that yourself is a noun. But if you really dig deep, you'll come to find that yourself is a doing. Yourself is a process. It is constantly happening. So when we talk about changing your self-image, sure, we're changing your self-image, but your self-image simply means the way that you are viewing yourself. Because when you go from viewing yourself as a thing that is, let's say, maybe infected by an addictive behavior, then you are looking to clear that self of that thing. Instead, once you realize that, oh, this self is ever fluctuating, not only does that allow you to manage it and control it better, but it also helps you realize something, especially if you're in the later stages of your reboot. And what is that? That the journey does not end. When you're thinking, oh, you know, my self-image will change, I'll end my behavior, and then my life will be good. No, the self keeps moving, keeps reacting to different things. And that lets you know that the journey hasn't ended. And that's one of the reasons why I keep striving to meditate and to go deeper and deeper. Because even after control of my sexual behavior, I realized that life still has more for me. There's still more to it. Now, as I said, this may be a little bit of an obscure topic, especially if you've not been exposed to ideas like this, especially if you haven't gotten deeper into yourself. But if this is something that interests you, if this is something that you'd like to learn how to explore, those are one of the things that we do within our program, especially within the Porn Reboot Intensive program. We go deep on this, we explore this, and we have the exercises and the accountability to do it. So if that's something that interests you, I recommend that once you're done listening to this podcast episode, take a moment, go down to the description of the podcast and schedule a call with one of our Reboot strategists. All of them are rebooted men, and they are very happy to help you out and help you find out if this program is a good fit for you. But I do appreciate you taking the time to listen to this.